Imagine living with someone for over three years and even getting kids with them, just to find out later that the love of your life is the taker of young girls' lives. This is the heartbreaking discovery that Caroline Mwangeli will sadly live with for the rest of her life. She is the ex-girlfriend of the self-confessed child serial killer and pedophile Evans Juma Wanjala, a man who single-handedly defiled five young girls and murdered them in Moyes Bridge, Wasingishu County, within 18 months. Welcome or welcome back to the Insight Edition. My name is Yusuf, and on today's episode of Criminal Diaries, we are going to look into the disturbing case of Evans Juma Wanjala, a.k.a the Moist Bridge Killer. Here at the Insight Edition, we post stories of serial killers and strange murders that happened in Kenya, Africa, and the rest of the world. So if true crime is your kind of thing, don't forget to subscribe. When you take a look at Moist Bridge, Uwasingishu County from your screens, the place looks very serene and calm. But don't let the looks deceive you. It is in this same place that nine girls were kidnapped, defiled, and murdered, and later their bodies dumped in thickets, maize farms, and streams that were nearby. The disappearances and killings of these young girls had started in the late 2019. On the 19th of December 2019, at around 6.30 p.m., Sharon Sakwa sent her 11-year-old daughter Stacy Nabiso to go buy vegetables from her regular vendor. The 11-year-old left for the vegetables but sadly never made it back home. Her body was found 12 days later near a railway line on the 1st of January 2020. Grace Njeri, a 12-year-old girl, disappeared on the 21st of May 2020 and her body was found on June 18th, 2020 in a thicket. She had disappeared for almost a month. Shockingly, in the same year, on the 19th of December 2020, Mary Aluza went missing. The 14-year-old girl was coming from her father's shop at Moise Bridge Township and was headed home. In her hands were the sacks her father had instructed her to give to her mother when she reached home for May's storage. The father, Geoffrey Omega, called home after a while to inquire whether his daughter had reached there, but the response from the other end was negative. He immediately closed his shop, mobilized the villagers, and together they started the search for his daughter. The body of the 14-year-old was discovered a day later by a farmer in his maize farm. The lifeless body of Mary Aluza had been placed in one of the sacks that she had been carrying. On the 16th of January 2021, 13-year-old Lucy Wanjiru was defiled and killed. The girl was a standard 6 pupil at Moi Township Primary School. Her mother, a green grocer, was at the market when the murder occurred. Her stepfather was arrested, but due to lack of evidence, he was later on released. Luck seemed to have run out for the killer, or he got too comfortable, as a mistake he did while in the process of taking the life of his fifth victim brought him right into the hands of the law. On the 11th of June 2021, at around 11 a.m., Linda Cherono, a 13-year-old girl had left home to go to a saloon, but she neither reached there nor came back home. Her aunt had instructed her to go to her workplace first before going to the salon. When she failed to show up, the aunt called her husband back at home to see if the girl was still there, but she was told that Linda had already left. Linda will remain missing for two days before her mutilated body was discovered dumped in a maize plantation which was just 20 meters from government residences. The discovery of the body sparked outrage and protests by irate Moise Bridge residents who claimed Cherono's death was the ninth case of disappearance of teenage girls whose bodies have been found dumped in maize plantations and bushes. Luckily, this time around, the police had a lead. A CCTV camera installed 
in one of the local petrol stations had captured the late Linda Cherono following a man in an open field. The man was wearing a red t-shirt and gumboots. What no one has understood up to date is how the man managed to get Linda to follow him like that. Looking at the footage, the girl is following the man like a robot that has been commanded to do so. The locals who were blaming the police for hesitating to apprehend the perpetrator started demonstrations which brought the whole area to a standstill. The pressure that had built up forced the Directorate of Criminal Investigations agents to travel to Eldoret from their headquarters and look at the case files. Later on, with the help of the CCTV footage, they managed to arrest Evans Juma Wanjala as the main suspect since he was the man in the footage and automatically the last person to have seen Linda Cherono alive. At the time, the police didn't know that. In hand, they had a serial killer who had been harassing young girls for a very long time, but this time around, he was murdering them too. Most details about Evans Juma Wanjala's background are unknown. The little information that we have about him is the following. Evans Wanjala is a habitual offender. At the time of his arrest, the DCI discovered that there were arrest warrants issued against him by a Makindu law court and a Kajiado law court where he had stayed earlier. At Makindu and Kajiado, Evans was charged with sexually molesting minors. The first incident in Makindu, which involved a nine-year-old girl, happened in Kibwezi Township on September 19, 2018. Wanjala had settled there after coming from Kajado County and was working as a floor tiles fixer. He met his girlfriend, Caroline Mongeli, while working on a certain church and the two settled in together. Evans Wanjala got arrested later on for defiling the nine-year-old. However, he didn't stay locked up for long because his girlfriend managed to raise 200,000 shillings, which she used to bail him out. After the incident and the arrest, they were no longer welcomed to stay in Kibwezi and this would force them to relocate to Kinyambu Township. Barely three months after their relocation to Kinyambu, Evans Wanjala got arrested again. This time around, he had defiled a teenager. Surprisingly, he was released again on a bond of 100,000 shillings. Evans Wanjala and his small family are reported to have left Kinyambu in the wee hours of the night as no one saw them leave. Moise Bridge was their next destination. He had successfully escaped the trial for his sexual offenses, or so he thought. They arrived at Moise Bridge somewhere in 2019 and surprisingly, just months after their relocation, the disappearances and murders of young girls became rampant. Evans Juma Wanjala had managed to evade arrest for more than two years. But when his luck ran out, he was arrested on the 16th of June 2021 after a CCTV footage showed him in the company of his latest victim, that was the 13-year-old Linda Cherono. Following his arrest, Wanjala confessed to his crimes and agreed to take the investigating officers to all the five scenes where he had defiled and killed the five young girls. At each crime scene, Wanjala agreed to a reenactment of the murders. Wanjala told the police that after killing the girls, he will feel relieved and at peace. Most of the scenes the suspect took the detectives to were thickets near maize plantations and pools of water. At the locations, detectives collected evidence that will help with Evans Wanjala's prosecution. During the reenactment, homicide detectives accompanied by their scenes of crime and photographic and acoustics counterparts documented forensically each of the five murder scenes as the executioner demonstrated how he abducted, defiled, murdered, and dumped the bodies of the minors. Shockingly, 
Wanjala pleaded not guilty in court when he was charged with the murder of the three girls, as investigations on the other two girls linked to him were still ongoing. Since his attempt to get free again by bond failed back in 2022, Wanjala is remanded at the Eldoret GK prison. The case of Evans Juma Wanjala has a lot of similarities with that of Mustang Milimo Wanjala. First, the name. Then, both of them targeted children and coincidentally got arrested and confessed within the same month. So, if you haven't seen our video on Mustin Wanjala, you can tap on it now on your screen to watch it.